makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. Good morning, bright and early. I had an idea. Oh, yes, I have ideas once in a while. Why not start a special little department here on the show? Call it the Department of New or Unusual Uses for Johnson's Wax. I could even ask you people to write in and tell me about new uses you've discovered for wax. And maybe we'll read them on future programs. Isn't that a good idea? For one thing, we may all get some very timely suggestions, either for saving work or protecting our things. I could start off this department of new uses with a letter that came in the other day from a woman in Illinois. Here it is. I always wax my oilcloth tabletops and pantry shelves. I wonder how many other women have discovered this new use for your wonderful Johnson's Wax. It keeps the oilcloth glistening, easy to clean, makes it last longer, and the dishes don't stick to the cloth. Yes, sir, folks, that's just one of the 100 extra uses for Johnson's Wax. For protecting, beautifying, taking better care of the things you have. It's a strange and wonderful thing that in times of great national emergency, some born leader always arises to lead his people to victory. In England, there's Churchill. In America, there's Roosevelt. In Russia, there's Stalin. In China, there's Chiang Kai-shek. And in Wistful Vista, during the Red Cross drive, there's... Well, wouldn't you just know it? And here he is as we meet Fibber McGee and Molly. So you've been appointed to collect funds for the American Red Cross, have you? Couldn't turn them down. When do you have to go to Washington? Oh, I won't have to go to Washington. It's too crowded. <laughs> I couldn't do my best work there. They say they got people sleeping on billiard tables down there. Well, <laughs> what's another seven hours behind the eight ball to you anyway? <laughs> oh, anyway, I, I'm not exactly the national collector for the Red Cross. Oh, just for this state, huh? Well, no, not exactly for the whole state. You see, Just I... for Wistful Vista? Well, practically, yes. I'm in charge of this neighborhood. Or, to be strictly accurate, of, of this street. Oh. The whole street? No, just this side of the street. <laughs> well, heavenly days, even that's a responsibility. The whole of one side of the street. Oh, it ain't exactly the whole side of the street. It's just this end of this side of the street. <laughs> Your territory is getting more exclusive by the minute, dearie. You sure you're not just in charge of the last four feet of the east side of our coal cellar? No, sir. I got the responsibility of collecting funds for this whole end of the street. My quota is 50 bucks. Fifty dollars? Isn't that a lot? Fifty bucks is just a drip in the sink. <laughs> you realize that the Red Cross has already turned out to 520 million surgical dressings? Did you know that the Red Cross operates 150 service clubs and recreation centers for the guys overseas? Do you realize... Wait a minute, dearie. You don't have to sell me the Red Cross. Oh. What I want to know is, who appointed you? Well, you see, it was, it was a kind of a volunteer thing. They were all... Who appointed you? Well, frankly, it boiled down to a choice. Who of... appointed you? I did. Who set the quota at $50? I did, and I'll collect it, too. If anybody comes to this house today without kicking in some dough, I ain't the salesman I think I am. All right. You don't have to stick your chin out at me. It's a wonderful idea, and I'll help you. How much does the Red Cross need in all? 125 million. Well, you may have a hard time collecting money for anything just after people have turned their pockets inside out to pay income taxes, McGee. This ain't a matter of reaching into your pocket. This is a matter of reaching into your heart. You pay taxes on a percentage of your income to support the government. You give to the Red Cross on a percentage of your belief in humanity. <laughs> Excuse me if I sound a little drippy, but that's how I feel about it. Well, you know, in that case, I think 50 is too low a quota. Okay, I'll double it. I'll make it 100 bucks. Good. And if I don't collect it, I'll write my personal check for the difference. Oh, sure. 
Give them your check and a fielder's glove. Huh? <laughs> Maybe they can catch it on the third bounce. Don't worry. The bank knows me. <laughs> they should. <laughs> You've worn out one of their rubber stamps. You know, the one that says, we regret to inform yeah, you. Yeah. That... <laughs> you know how bankers are. They've been peeking through those brass bars so long, they got a very narrow outlook. <laughs> you know why old McDonald down at the Third National has to start wearing sports shirts? No. Because shaking his head no all day in a high collar, he was sawing his head off. <laughs> As a friend of mine, old Fred Nittany of Star Rock, Illinois, used to say, he says to me... Come in. Well, for goodness sakes, if it isn't Abigail Luffington. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. McGee and Miss McGee? Hi, Effie. Fling your frame on a chair and save a third of coupon 17. <laughs> I was just talking about you. Uh, you were? Yes, sir. I was just saying. Now, you take up, I says. Now, there's a gal that's as open-handed as they come. Always ready to toss a buck on the drum for a good cause. As warm-hearted as a hot hamburger and as generous as the day is long in the Arctic Circle. How much do you want? And for what? <laughs> you have the subtle approach of a 20-mule team crossing a wooden bridge, McGee. Okay. Well, it's about the Red Cross War Fund, Abigail. McGee is collecting for it. I've set a quota of 100 bucks for this end of the street, Uppy, and it's a darn good call. How much do you want to give, Abigail? Well, nothing at the moment, my dear. What? What do you oh, mean? No, I sent him a large check yesterday morning. Oh, my gosh, and I was counting on you, Uppy. Hey, you got any sporting blood, kid? <laughs> Now what, McGee? Ever see a pair of these before, Uppy? Why, what interesting little objects, Mr. McGee. Hmm. Made of ivory, are they not? Yeah. They're called dice, Abigail. Uh-huh. Otherwise known as Memphis marbles, Birmingham dominoes, and gutter golf balls. <laughs> you play a game with them called craps, Uppy. What do you say we try it? Oh, say for a nominal sum. The winnings to be donated to the Red Cross. What do you say, kid? Oh, McGee, now don't take advantage of Abigail's ignorance. Oh, my dear, I, I should love to try it. Uh, uh, what does one do with the juice? Dice, Uppy. Dice. <laughs> oh, but there are two of them, Mr. McGee. Dice singular, juice plural. <laughs> well, they're still dice, Abigail. And it's singular what people can do with them, plural. <laughs> sure, McGee. Now, look, Uppy, you shake them in your hand like this, you see? Mm-hmm. Then you throw them out and try to throw seven. But if the dots on top uh, add up to, say, eight, why, well, that's your point. you got to throw them again and try to make an eight, see? If you get a seven before you make your point, you lose. Otherwise, you keep trying for the eight till you get the eight. Oh, <laughs> sounds ridiculously easy, Mr. McGee. Famous last word. <laughs> well, you got the right spirit, Uppy. And whatever I win, I'll give to the Red Cross. How much you want to play for? Well, you said some nominal sum. Uh, let's say twenty dollars. Wow. <laughs> That is a nominal. That's phenomenal. <laughs> well, twenty bucks it is, Uppy. Now you take the dice. Here. No, 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 no. Not in the palm of t- in the palm of your hand. Not between oh. your thumb and forefinger. Uh. <laughs> twenty bucks on the carpet, and I'll cover. You kneel down and roll them out. Go ahead. <laughs> My, this is fun, isn't it? Really. <laughs> I should warn you, Mister McGee. I was very good at playing jacks when I was a girl. <laughs> uh, ready? Ready. Shoot them. Uh, come on, babies, talk to mama. Come <laughs> eleven. A four and a tray, and we're here all day. Hey. A five and a two, cause the red is due. <laughs> ah, seven it is. <laughs> Cover that twenty, and you're gonna need no leather. <laughs> Roll them out again, Abigail. <laughs> And let us come straight from heaven. Wow, am I hot tonight? (laughs) (laughs) Come on, ration book. Mama needs shoes. (laughs) Ah, Ada from Decatur. A smart point, and I'll clean the joint. Feed me, buddy. Feed me. Well, I'll be a monkey. Look out, Wolf. Here comes little Red Riding Hood. Here here we go again. Come seven. Seven or eleven. Come seven, seven, seven.
Well, how much did Abigail finally take you for, McGee? Thirty-seven bucks. Oh, <laughs> but she promised she'd give it to the Red Cross. Hey, can you imagine her playing bright-eyed innocence and all the time she shoots craps like she'd served seven hitches in the Marines? <laughs> I never saw anything like it. She handled those ivories like she'd been a personal friend of the elephant that grew them. <laughs> I wonder if she's ever had any bone operation. Why? I'll bet them dice were carved out of her own clavicle. <laughs> Of all the dirty tricks I Did ever you heard... give Abigail $37 in cash? No, I gave her a check. A check? Yeah. Well, you haven't got that much in the bank. I will have before the day is over. But that money will be for the Red Cross. Sure it is. I give her my check, she gives it to the Red Cross. I cover it with what I collect. Oh, dear. <laughs> as long as the Red Cross gets 100 bucks, that's all I care. You've got me all confused. I think you better call Mr. McDonald at the Third National and tell him you might be a little overdrawn. What? Call that penny pinching old petty father? No, sir. That guy ain't human. He's an iceberg that was left over from the glacial period and they built the bank around him. I think Mr. McDonald is very nice. He always... Uh-oh. The mail girl. The baguette. Come in. Hello, dearie. Any mail for us today? Nothing but a postcard, Mrs. McGee. It's from Mr. McGee's Uncle Sycamore in Horses Head, New York. <laughs> It's way down in the bottom of my mail bag, but I can dig it out in 10 or 15 minutes. Oh, don't bother, sis. Never mind. You remember what the message was? Yes. He says he struck oil on his farm last week, and he hopes you'll forgive him. Forgive him for striking oil? Oil is the name of a hound dog I gave him on oh. <laughs> They call him oil because he acts so crude. <laughs> hey, sis, you got a minute to spare? Certainly. Well, look, this is my territory to collect money for the Red, Red Cross War Fund, you see? They're putting on a drive this month in this country and Canada. But I already signed a pledge in my own neighborhood. Look, and sis, that... I'll make you a sporting proposition. How much dough you got with you? Three dollars and thirty cents. Oh, dear. Okay, we'll cut the cards for three bucks. <laughs> Whichever of us wins gives the dough to the Red Cross. How about it? That's fair enough. Here's a deck of cards, McGee. Now, you cut them first, sis. Yeah. Just draw, just draw a card. Any card. All right. Here you are. The ace of spades. <laughs> <laughs> no use you drawing, McGee. You can't beat the ace of spades. Right. Now, you win, sis. Just send the three bucks to the Red Cross. Very well, Mr. McGee. No, you send it. Huh? Oh, oh okay. <laughs> now, now, I'm out 40 bucks. Imagine the luck of that gal. Out of 52 cards, she has to draw the highest one in the deck. Oh. I don't see why. McGee, you know what I did? I gave you the wrong deck. What you mean? This is that pack of cards you bought at the magic shop to do tricks with. Huh? And every card in it is the ace of spades. Oh, sure. <laughs> I still think you ought to call Mr. McDonald about that check he gave Mrs. Uppington. I ain't calling McDonald till I absolutely have to. He's too tough. Why, that guy won't even let his kids play the piano because they might negotiate a couple of bad notes. Oh. <laughs> well, as a collector for the Red Cross, you're not exactly the... Hello, folks. Glad to find you at home. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Harlow, you're just the guy I was hoping to see. I'm campaigning. For what? Fewer ration points on corn? <laughs> don't irk me, Junior. Don't irk me. <laughs> no, don't, Mr. Wilcox. He's had a long enough irking day as it is. <laughs> well, what's the campaign? Well, look, son... Who is it that goes all over the world bringing good health and good cheer and a helping hand? Who represents the finest and best in unselfish devotion to the cause of making the old world a better place to live? And don't say the Johnson Wax Man. <laughs> I wasn't going to. I was going to say the Red Cross. Oh, well, good for you, Junior. Now, look, I'm the collector in this neighborhood for the Red Cross War Fund. How's about throwing five or ten bucks on the drum, huh? Well, I'd be glad to, chum, but I'm a little short at the moment. Will Thursday do? Of course it will. No, it won't. I want it today. And while I didn't want to mention it at this time, Junior, you can pay me that 25 bucks you owe me. I'll give that to the Red Cross and call the debt paid. What 25 bucks? You know the time you were short on your income tax in 1934, and I loaned you 25 bucks? Did he, Mr. Wilcox? By golly, he did. Betcha. And that reminds me. How about that 50 I gave you to bribe that cop the time you knocked over the traffic light? <laughs> you owe me 25 bucks, and I can use it. Gosh, I'd forgot all about that. Well, look, if I give you a check for it, will you send it to the Red Cross? I certainly will, pal. I'll endorse it over to him right here and now. Now, McGee, if you write another check, Mr. McDonald will be angry. Who's Mr. McDonald? He's the man who will be angry if McGee writes the check. Oh. <laughs> here you are, Junior. Now, let me see you endorse it to the Red Cross. Right all right, here. here. Give me your pen. Yeah. Pay to the order of American Red Cross. Gee, he writes fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, I get this right in the mail, pal. So long, Molly. <laughs> 
Let me see. Forty and twenty-five, that's sixty-five dollars you're overdrawn, McGee. Mm-hmm. You can't have people sending the Red Cross bad checks. They're not bad. You think I'm a crook? I'll make those checks good. Old McDonald at the bank will cover me. Well, he wouldn't if he knew what you say about him. But he don't. He don't know I think he's a miserly old peep squawk or squeak pop or foot squeak. <laughs> but what do I mean? Hip squeak. Yeah. Remember the trouble we had with him when we bought this house and he put the deal through escort? <laughs> You don't mean escort, you mean escrow. I do not. Escrow is a magazine for men. You're thinking of Esquire. Esquire? I thought an Esquire was a guy that lived in an igloo and ate blubber. That's Eskimo. Well, then what's an escort? An escort is somebody who takes your place. Well, that's McDonald, all right. He sure took us. Well, all I can say, dearie, is that... Come in. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Hello, Mr. McGee. Hello, Mr. McGee. Mr. Wimp. Hi, Wimp, old sock. Where you been all this time? Out of town, Mr. McGee. Oh. I went to New York to see my publishers. Oh. They bought one of my poems. For cloud or storm, we airmen of the sea, proud to shield our land of liberty. Oh, we're the skyline of defense, the Navy's flying might. The first in every fight on wings of steel will never yield the blue. Sky anchors away, sky high, anchors away. Anchors away. Airmen of the Navy, wings at sea. Watchmen of Columbia's fleet. Now to the call for victory, ready to fly, ready to fight, ready to die, speed on to defend America, airmen of the Navy Blue, fly fighting for all America, give her the gun, ever alert, war to be won. Seven bucks to Uppington, twenty-five to Wilcox, seventeen fifty to Wimple. Ah, eighty bucks. Hey, Molly. Don't bother me, dearie. I'm making the bed. Did you look and see how much I had left in my checkbook? Yes, I did. How much? Thirteen cents. <laughs> my gosh, thirteen cents. Eighty dollars from thirteen cents is. You can't subtract that. <laughs> well, it looks like I got to go see old McDonald. That old nickel nurse is sitting on 70 million bucks, and he'll scold me for $80. If I wasn't collecting for the Red Cross, I... Come in. Hi, mister. Oh, oh, hello there, little girl. Don't bother me today now. I got heavy responsibilities. Hmm? I says I got heavy responsibilities. I'm collecting today for the Red Cross. Oh. How much have you collected for him so far, mister? Well, uh, I haven't exactly... I mean, (laughs) no actual cash is... That is, um... Well, the Red Cross is getting about 80 bucks so far. Oh, gee, that ain't hay, is it, mister? No, no that ain't, but we got to do better. Have you got any money, sis? Sure, I have, I bet you. How much? I got a half a dollar. Huh. Well, who am I to sneer to half a buck? <laughs> Let me take it, sis, and I'll match you for it. Winner to give it to the Red Cross. Okay, mister, here. I'll flip it and call it. Heads or tails? Go. Heads. <laughs> well, I'll be it. Heads it is. Okay, you win, sis. Here's your half a buck and another one. Hey, you want to do it again? No, thanks. No, thanks, uh-huh. mister. If we keep on playing, you might win my half a dollar, and you couldn't spend it anyway. Why couldn't I? Because that's why my daddy gave it to me. Huh? It's got two heads on it. Go mm-hmm. so on, mister. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Well, that settles it. I'm getting in too deep. Hey, Molly. Yes, dear. Get your hat. We gotta go see old McDonald. Now look, Mac, old man. I always spoke very highly of you. <laughs> Are you a cold, Mrs. McGee? No, <clears throat> no, Mr. McDonald. No, uh, don't let me interrupt. Uh, you were saying, Mr. McGee? I was saying that I've been overdrawn before, Mac. You've always covered me, and I always made it good. Gee whiz, what's a mere 83 bucks? Mr. McGee, I am a banker. I am responsible to hundreds of depositors in this bank. I must know when we advance money that it isn't going for something foolish. What became of the $83 you want me to replace in your checking account? Well, uh, he lost 37 in the crap game and 25 in... crap game? Now, look here, Now, McGee. wait a minute, Mac. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute, can... McGee. What about the $25, Mrs. McGee? Well, that was perfectly legitimate, Mr. McDonald. Uh, he paid off an old debt to Mr. Wilcox that he'd owed for seven or eight years. There. See, that shows I'm honest, don't it? Honest? Letting a debt go for seven years before you paid it off? <laughs> How long would it take you to pay off the money you'll owe this bank? <laughs> No, McGee, I'm Parson afraid... Parson 1750 he lost was legitimate, Mr. McDonald. He merely made a wager and he lost to Mr. Wimple. Yeah, a wager. Right. He gambles, he bets, he lets his debts ride for year after year. Yeah, but look, Mac, it's old no man... no use, I... McGee. You're thoroughly irresponsible. What? I can't give you a cent. Hmm. You'll have to make those checks good the best you can. Yes, but... But, 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 but... But how about the Red Cross? The what? The Red Cross, Mac. I was trying to collect the money for them. A hundred bucks was my quota. All my checks were endorsed to them. Well, why didn't you say so? Why were you wasting my time? Huh? Don't you know I have a son in the Army and a nephew in the Air Corps and a niece in the WAC? No, we didn't know Don't you that. think I want to back them up with everything I can? Uh, well... For goodness sake, do you think any of us can afford to let the Red Cross down when they're feeding starving children all over the world? Uh, making life bearable for prisoners of war? Saving lives with blood plasma? Training nurses for all branches of the service? What's the matter with you, McGee? Well, gee, what's, what's the idea of losing only a miserable $37 shooting craps when the money goes to the Red Cross? Well, he only... Don't said... interrupt me. Mr. Swallow, put $83 in Mr. McGee's checking account immediately. And listen to me, McGee. Huh? If I ever hear of you making any more silly bets for less than 1000 when the Red Cross gets the money, I'll close your account. Now, get out! Okay, man. <laughs> Going around into people's homes, I always notice the floors. I guess you'd expect that from me, wouldn't you, like a bus driver on holiday? Of course, I see all kinds of floors and all kinds of linoleum. I always get a big kick out of finding a piece of linoleum that looks like new, colors bright and fresh, only to find out that it's actually 15 or 20 years old. Why, it's been waxed ever since we put it down, and now it's protected regularly with Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. That's the answer, I guess. And there on the pantry shelf, sure enough, is the familiar can or bottle of Johnson's Glow Coat that takes such good care of that linoleum, increases its life six to ten times, all in addition to saving many hours of your time, because Glow Coat needs no rubbing or buffing. It shines as it dries. Johnson's Glow Coat is your real friend and alive. Something I want to say to you. Look, Molly, if it's about shooting craps, I promise I'll never... It wasn't ne about shooting craps. I just want... I know, letting that debt to Wilcox run so long. Gee whiz, I just forgot it, that's all. And after this, I promise I'll it always... It wasn't be... about your debts. I merely want... All right, so I did match coins with that little girl. But my gosh, she's old enough... I to... wasn't going to say anything about matching coins. All I if was... If was go... talking dirty about old McDonald, I take that back. He's okay, but I never Will knew... Will you he... be quiet a minute? Okay, let's have it. What do you want to say? Good night. Huh? Oh, good night. Good night. <laughs> the 
character of Wallace Wimple heard on this program was played by Bill Thompson. This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson Wax Finishes for Home and Industry, inviting you all to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Chicago, WMAQ at 9 p.m. VULOVA, Bulova Watch Time. You've done.